My name is Jeremy Wahome and I'm an upcoming rally and racing driver. So it's been my aim to become an international driver in Formula One and now also the opportunity has arisen in rally. I started motorsport when I was around eight years old. Um, I used to go to the local go-kart track, some of you may know, at Carnival or GP Karting near Carnival. So I did that for for a few a few months um, and then I got a competitive go-kart and started competing. So my motorsport journey started off as a hobby and then now with time I got more interested and wanted to now make it a career. Any, any form of motorsport where you're given free reins of a car and you're trying to push it to the limit, that's what I enjoy the most and also pushing myself. So every scenario, every challenge is different. So being able to maximize the best of my ability and the best of the car's potential, when you get that balance right, it's a very satisfying and fulfilling quest, if I can put it that way. I grew up in Nairobi. Um, I went to Rusinga primary school and then went to Hillcrest for my secondary school. Growing up was, was okay. I was a very sporty person and also quite okay on the academic side as well. So I balanced both and I enjoyed sports in general. So each time we'd play a different sport in school and, and I, I enjoyed all sports and I particularly used to do a lot of swimming. So I grew up sporty, but also keeping up the school side. Then as I now grew older in my teens is when I started to now pursue my interest in motorsport. So I, as I, started, as I kept going on with my go-karting in Kenya, um, I now started following Formula One online and watching the races. And that's when now my, my love for the sport started growing. And I remember I was with a friend of mine and we both were like, okay, there's no Kenyans in this sport maybe we should try and be the first Kenyan. It was a very innocent um, ambition, but now seven, eight years later, the journey has kept going. So I now started taking steps, which meant racing abroad. I moved to the UK to do my form five and six, but I was doing that concurrently with being in school at the same time. So I still did my high school, my A-levels and my university, whilst I was also racing in the, in the UK and in Asia together. When I started go-karting, it was more of a hobby that I did every couple of weekends, once a weekend. So then there wasn't much of a conflict with school. But then as I now kept pursuing the sport more and, and traveling and taking more time off school, my parents were still supportive in that. But as long as I still kept up my academic side of things so that I could pursue both at the same time. So from that point of view, I was very privileged that I had parents who were supportive and they didn't shy away from it being let's say a dangerous sport or a foreign sport. And even now, when I started racing in the UK, they were supportive in finding me a school also abroad so that I could keep my studies and race at the same time. So I think that was important for me because it also helps me mature as a person and as a driver at the same time. So, because some people usually drop out early, but there's some crucial skills you learn as you keep going, even as, as you you grow with your, your age mates, that's those social skills and stuff like that. So from my side, I was very privileged to have parents who were able to support me in a very foreign and dangerous sport. But as long as I kept my side of the bargain and kept going to school and delivering good grades. I started racing when I was around eight. I think I won my first race when I was 12, uh, four years later. Um, and that's actually when I now, I was like, oh, I can win races and I liked the feeling and I started getting more competitive. So that was in Nakuru. That was one memorable moment because I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but at the end of qualifying, I was the fastest. Then now that was my first time starting a race fast and I won the first heat and the second heat and the third heat and eventually the final. So for me, that was a big day in solidifying my dream for I can actually do this. And it now kick-started kick the, the rest of the steps towards making this a career. In terms of mistakes, I don't, it's good that I don't remember these days because I don't like to dwell on them. But as, as a younger self, most of the mistakes maybe used to be impatience, especially in, in racing, maybe you want to overtake someone and you, you, 
you don't have the almost the maturity to to bid your time and wait and pick the right moment. So sometimes I'd go into overtaking moves a bit too rash or half-hearted, and then ends up in an accident and you ruin your race or maybe stuff like I never used to handle pressure very well. So if there was someone behind me, I was the one who was bound to make a mistake first and let him through. So just handling that and being a bit too eager. But now with time, I've now learned how to pace myself, make the right judgment calls. But these are all normal things. That's why I don't necessarily call them mistakes. But with experience, you now learn how to manage that side of the racing. Navasha was a fun experience for me. It was my first time driving a rally car and driving abroad. I mean off-road, <laughs> because when I was abroad, I was doing more of the circuit racing on tarmac. So this was my first time now back racing home since racing in, in Nakuru for about, after about, what, seven, eight years. So it was nice to race at a home crowd and take up a new challenge. And it went well in the end. Managed to get up to speed. I had a good navigator, Victor Okundi, who helped take me through the steps. And yeah, it was really enjoyable in the end and um, fun. The results were good. Um, a lot of driving from Thursday through to Sunday. So being able to do that in front of a home crowd on a such big event like the WRC was definitely a fun part. So following the, the previous event, the WRC uh, Safari Rally in Naivasha, will now the program, the FIA Rally Star program, the three drivers, myself, McCray and Hamza, will now be continuing with the Africa Rally Championship. So we'll be racing in Tanzania on the between, from the 24th to the 25th of, of July. And then following that also a month later in Uganda and Rwanda later on in the year. So it's exciting for us young drivers to now get the sponsorship to get a full campaign and season done in the rally cars. So in motorsport, a lot of the practice actually happens behind the scenes or away from the car. Um, maybe we'll have before an event two or three days, depending on how much you can afford to do extra practice. But a lot of the practice is now in the homework you do at home. So whether it's keeping fit, um, perfecting how you write notes. I like to play rally games and that helps me practice how to listen to a navigator in my ear and process that information quickly. So a lot of the work is done at home so that when you get the opportunity to go on track, you can now practice the skills you've learned. So you, you, you now don't waste time in in getting up to speed and practicing. But on a typical rally day, maybe, you know, up nice and early, go through your run plan with your team, then you test out different driving styles, practice handbrake turns, different setups for different terrains. So stuff like that, a whole day affair and comparing notes between the team, my navigator, that's the most important, giving feedback accurately so the team knows how to set up the car properly. So the rally car I drive is a Ford Fiesta Rally 3 car. So rally has its four categories, rally one, two, three, and four, with the top one being the first. So rally three and all rally cars are based on the road going models. So just like the Ford Fiesta on the road, my rally car is the same. But now you have upgraded engine elements, a bit more power. The car is stripped out inside to get rid of a lot of the weight and they change the gearbox. But when you look at it, it resembles the road going Ford Fiesta. So Ford Fiesta Rally 3. Some of the challenges in rally, typical ones, which I experienced in my first rally as well, was stuff like punctures. One of the stages was very rocky and stones on the sides of the course. So if, if you go slightly off, some of them you may not even be able to avoid, but we ended up getting two punctures. One we got on stage, one we got um, once the stage had ended, luckily, but you're now in the heat of the moment, you now you and your navigator get out and you're trying to change a tire in the heat of the moment and our car had also switched off. So in that heat of the moment, you're trying to figure out, and it's a new car as well, how do I restart the car? We know how to restart the car, but to solve the issue of why it actually switched off, how do we change a tire? And there's also a, a, a procedure between who lifts the car and then who does the, the wheel nuts. So that was a challenge, but luckily it didn't cost us too much time. And, but yeah, it's a part of the sport, and with practice and preparation, we try to avoid such. My dreams are solely on motorsport. Um, my dream is to make it onto the worldwide stage in rally and in Formula One. I started off with, with a Formula One ambition to be a, a, the first Kenyan Formula One driver, 
and now also with the opportunity in WRC, that's also another aim I would like to pursue. And if I get both, then I'll be super happy. But most of all is to be able to promote African motorsport and to put African drivers on the map. So whichever field that happens in, that remains the top goal. And it's really encouraging to now see sponsors come on board, the Ministry of Sports to now help develop the local talent. And hopefully it can now filter down for other up upcoming drivers to now have the same opportunities that we have. Um, so yeah, hopefully the next, the rally is here for the next five years. So hopefully by the time that particular contract is over, we may have a Kenyan in, in the form of me, <laughs> um, nice. be one of the drivers. I think as, as young people or people pursuing their dreams, whether it's in sports, career, whatever it is, I think just from hearing a few people's stories, um, maybe it's, it's, it's the, and also myself, the almost sometimes always being in a hurry to achieve a goal so quickly and the pressure for, let's say if you're doing football, I want to get in by this age or in racing, like I want to be in Formula One by 21 because other drivers are there by 21. But you forget that as a driver, everyone develops and matures at different, different times. And everyone almost, should I say, has the appointed a time when they'll be ready for a particular scenario or whatever it is they're trying to, to achieve. So just to, to stop being so, like destiny, like sometimes I focus so much on getting to Formula One, I forget to develop myself as a driver and enjoy the sport. So I think that that's usually where it, the results overtakes the actual fun and drive that you have and you almost lose the passion for what you're doing. Um, that's the most thing I've seen. So apart from that, everyone's journey is different. So I don't know what particular people go through in terms of challenges. Um, in terms of starting motorsport and rally in Kenya, um, we have we have programs where people can now volunteer to be marshals and then if you can't afford to start off racing there's the other side of the sport where you're involved in marshalling being part of organizing an event so once you start off that way you kind of help yourself enter a close circle of motorsport and from there on you can now maybe start affiliating yourself with a team maybe you work with a team whether it's it's as a mechanic you help out in whatever way because right now in Kenya or in Africa, there's not so many opportunities in motorsport, which is one thing that we're really trying to address. But just whatever circle you have, if you know someone, just ask them, can I help you out? Can I get exposure? You start off slowly like that. And like in my case, um, I was just following my dreams and then sponsors came on board and they now offered support to, to race now internationally and develop my skills. So in whatever small way you can start, whether it's just going go-karting, once a month or once every two months. You never know if you keep practicing that trade who you may bump into. But I think for Kenyans, the bigger issue is hopefully I can be able to tie the two ends meet for make the sport more accessible to the younger gen up and coming generation because it's a very big financial barrier. So if you can make those two worlds meet, that would be the ideal scenario. So in terms of people I look up in the sport, uh, I grew up watching Lewis Hamilton and, and seeing him achieve his records, win championships. So that's who I always had in mind to emulate and hopefully race against. Um, and also in, in another motorsport field, MotoGP, I look up to, not look up to, I, I admire the way Mark Marquez races and his aggression and his overtakes. So those two people in, in the motorsport world are, are good examples I have for myself. When it comes to racing, racing will take up all of your time, so your hobbies have to be tied to racing. But um, aside from that, I enjoy, I enjoy sports in general. So whether it's playing squash with friends or, or basketball, and even just following sports, I can sit down and watch NBA matches, football not so much, um, but I generally try to keep tabs with all forms of sports around the world, whether it's, um, I actually enjoy walking. It's very uneventful, but <laughs> I enjoy it these days. Um, watching movies, series every now and then, and yeah, just spending time with family. I, I've always been a Ferrari fan, road cars, but in terms of 
bringing it back home. We don't drive Ferraris here yet. <laughs> um, I want to give you a very lame answer and say comfort. <laughs> what car is comfortable and has like a good music system or something? We have too many portals. Up until recently, um, my racing was, was, was funded uh, by my family. Um, but it's only up until now where we've started to get brands coming in to support sports, which is really encouraging because motorsport especially is a very financially dependent sport and has a very high barrier to entry. Whether you're racing go-karts of cars, it requires a lot of investment. So it's nice to have sponsors who are coming in and supporting a sport, especially young drivers. You don't usually see young people engaging in rally and stuff like that. So it's nice to see sponsors come on board. And I think that's the bigger push for the future so that we can have more sponsors come in in more sports and activities, whether it's basketball, netball, hockey. I used to love hockey in school. So it, it would be nice to see all these sports developing. But yeah, working with them is nice. They offer a lot of support, like flights, uh, equipment, getting cars, just from what we've benefited on the, on the rally program. So to have more like that is definitely the goal across all sports boards. Some of the lows I've had in motorsport, yeah, maybe back in the days I used to have maybe a rough night or a, like maybe I make a mistake or don't do as well in a race as I had hoped and expectations and reality don't meet. Those were some of the, were of the, the low low points. So maybe I'm doing really well in a race or, or spin out or it starts raining and you go off, stuff like those. But these days, not so moved by results at the end of the day. It doesn't, you won't see me more happy or sad or downbeat somewhere at the end of a race. So it becomes more than just racing, but a lot more. It's part of the journey. In terms of racing, you, you race maybe on a yearly contract. So since 2019, I hadn't taken part in a championship. So the pandemic didn't affect me directly, but now going forward, it hasn't really affected, but there's now more restrictions in championships. So if I was doing a European championship, it would be harder to cross borders, obviously, but now that I'm racing back home and managed to do the safari and going back, going on to Tanzania, there's not too much restriction. But for us to grow abroad, I'm sure right now it's a bit tricky. So we kind of have to wait a bit more to go back to Europe, but keep perfecting our skill at home while, while everything gets sorted. Okay, it's actually simpler than it looks. It looks very flamboyant outside of the car, but when you're driving, you maybe approach a corner, maybe if you're in fourth gear, you, you shift down. We have a stick, it's called a stick shift. Anyway, yeah, semi-sequential manual. So you push down to shift down, and then if you wanna do it in second gear, depending on the speed of first gear, so let's assume you're in first gear, then clutch in and turn the wheel and pull the handbrake. So the rear wheels will lock and send the car spinning around. And then once you've gotten the amount of rotation you want, you release the handbrake and then release the clutch and go back to accelerating. So you don't stall. That's why you have to use the clutch. But it becomes very natural the more times you do it. So in real time, it's just shift down, handbrake, turn, and then let go and keep going. Definitely getting a handbrake turn right is very satisfying, but also as well as just clipping every apex of the corner and the high speed stuff, that's also quite thrilling. So from the experience and the feedback from the rally and how it was a success in terms of young drivers getting support and, and helped pursue their dreams, I think this can also be employed across the board in whatever field it is, creative, arts, sports, to just whether it's a parent, a guardian, um, just young people themselves pursuing dreams that they never thought maybe were possible. If we can just get a culture where we're more supportive of foreign ideas, current ideas, just helping people all around and creating an environment where these things are made possible, I think it will be a very good success. So hopefully my journey and the journey of others will prove that if you invest and support a particular spot, it will pay and, and you'll reap the reward of that, that investment in the future. You can follow me on social media. My handles on Twitter and Instagram are at jwahome racing and on Facebook is Jeremiah Wahome Racing.